What is up, everybody? It is me, Duke Farley, back at it again here on Lost at Sea. And we are talking about week five of Big Brother, what happened and what happened in this latest episode as well. Um, I am joined again by <laughs> my Uncle Shane, who is giving the graphics. And Pat, <laughs> what's going on, guys? How's, it, how's everybody doing? How's, how's the Big Brother week for you guys? This was exciting, man. This was an exciting week. I couldn't wait for you to record. Dude. By the way, are we live or is this guys, pre-taped? Guys, we're live. <laughs> we're live. Okay. <laughs> exciting. Yeah. Patty, you look like you have a little very, pooch outfit on. Yeah, I'm repping uh, my boy from Staten Island, pooch. They call him Big Dog. So that's what I'm doing. Uh Yes, so we're uh, we're recording right after the Sunday night episode um, live, uh, but let's kind of catch up um, from the last time we spoke, right? Um, we were kind of talking about, was Michael going to take the shot here at Monty? Um, turns out he didn't. Turns out he played it safe, but um, I think some, DJ Showtime and a couple others uh, had some influence on, on what Michael had to do. What do you guys uh what do you guys think of DJ Showtime trying to uh put put a put a spinny on uh on Michael there? <laughs> you couldn't wait to do that, could you? <laughs> Listen, I think my favorite mo- moment was when um Daniel kept telling DJ Showtime, this is your week, and they're like basically high-fiving each other over like this mastermind plan. And none of it happened. Like it didn't even like it didn't start and then end. It like never started. And I just thought that um, sending up like when that group was like, "Hey, we really kind of need to put it in Michael's ear that he should take a shot at Monty." First of all, this guy is ten steps ahead of everyone. You don't need to put anything in this dude's ear. So then they they're like, "Okay, who's going to go up?" I felt like there was a moment, and maybe I just thought about this later, but like I feel like they were like, "All right, we we need to tell him." I didn't realize that every single person was going to go up and tell them, which was the best part, and which is what's in, this, in the span of an hour. It wasn't right. like that, that's the best part. Is like, yeah, well, let's let's come, let's get in his ear, and it's like every and Michael's like they just came up all at once, kind of like <laughs> after one another, and I, you, you think there's a moment where he's thinking about, it and they and then he goes in the diary room, he goes, yeah, now that everyone came out to me in the span of an hour. I feel like they want me to do their work. And I'm not going to completely turn them off. So maybe there was a chance, but just the timing of it was so poorly done. And the execution was so done, poorly done, that he was like, no, I'm not going to even consider this. I wanted them to pan to outside the room and just see them all in line waiting to go in. That would have been the the <laughs> right. I, I also love when uh, Terrence, uh, DJ Showtime, uh, Terrence, a.k.a. Say Terrence, his name right. Uh, Say his Daniel, name right. <laughs> I'm AK. Uh, they're they're both on the bed and like the like but Daniel knows what's hat like he knew what was going on he knew that there was this huge alliance and Terrence is the guy who's gonna flip the house upside down <laughs> and he has like the utter confidence and like just un like no self-awareness they're both like in D- and DJ Showtime right to the camera he goes I'm getting he's staying baby it's showtime and it's like oh my god Oh, no. <laughs> he also did that thing that we talked about in the past where he was talking to the camera. Like, DJ Showtime is talking to the camera now. He's now explaining how things are going to go for the audience who isn't as sharp as DJ Showtime. It's like, no, we're, we're all with you. It's not going to happen. It's like a lackluster Jekyll and Hyde. There's Terrence and then there's DJ Showtime. And there's two. <laughs> Do you guys think that if, say that like the attempt by you know terrence and like the four or five others if like they just kind of like didn't say anything that maybe michael would have went through with the plan to go after monty or do you think that like he he still would have balked at that chance i don't think he was gonna personally i then that was the question i was gonna ask you guys too is like do you think if they executed better, what would you have done? I don't think, I think he was just doing that to, that was maybe just like to allude to the, A, it's a thought, but in actuality, it was like, I don't, 
I don't think there was any way he could have done it uh, without drawing a line. And I don't think he wanted to do that or be the guy to do that. So I don't yeah, know what I, you guys think. I, I agree with that. But, you know, in the moment when he was like, like, it was like the play, he, if he was like prompted by like producers to go down that road, he did a really good job because I was like, oh, wow, he's going to make a, he might make a big move here. And then as soon as like they started running up to his room, then it, and it was over, then it was like, oh yeah, yeah. It makes more sense that he doesn't do it right now. But, yeah. but, you, but you see later on a couple episodes later, like we just got done watching an episode. He wants somebody to do it. He doesn't want to do it, but he wants that to be done. Yeah. I just wonder because I wonder if he felt like the people that are on the outside of the leftovers, like he had a better like read, like relationship on, but once they started coming up, then he was like, Oh, they're not totally with me here. Like I don't have like a full gauge on what's kind of going on. I might as well just stick with what I have, you know? Yeah. I think he felt like he was about to get played. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about Daniel. So Daniel got eliminated eight to one. Um, he tried his best to, you know, stay. Um, but there were still some fun moments from Daniel where I, the, I love the pre jury or the pre like voting speeches, like the last please. And he kind of just like is sandbagging <laughs> fucking Michael with his comp wins. Like you guys, you guys got to take a shot. Monte, Monte and Michael are working together and, fucking michael has five comp wins already um so what like let's just kind of talk about daniel and like his exit i mean i i appreciate it because i thought it, i thought it was uh entertaining i felt like he was on the verge of tears so like i took two points off for that because he looked like a little bitch but um but i like that he tried to like mix it up at the end and I, it was funny because it's like when you cut to Michael's face, it's almost like it's like Patrick said it in the last episode. It's like nobody realizes that this guy is steamrolling the entire game. It's like they had no idea. And um, and it was like all of a sudden they they were like, oh, my God, he's got that many wins. And then they immediately forgot again. Like it's like they <laughs> like, it's like he's like he's drugging everybody or something. Yeah, I, I, I feel it was, it's weird with Daniel and he's he's done this a lot. Um, like his, his interview, again, he ripped it off from, uh, evil, uh, evil Dick, Dr. Will, or not evil, uh, Dick, Dr. Will, he ripped it off from, uh, him because in his, like, don't vote for me, like, uh, all of you guys are scumbags. And then he, he was saved. And that was like, that's the classic BB, you know, eviction speech, but he didn't get evicted. So he's clearly ripping that off. And I was like, all right that it's unoriginal kind of it was entertaining because and then he goes on this whole tangent about michael and you know he he calls everybody boring or like you know you guys are all of you guys are like i don't like you and he makes this whole thing and then he sits down and he goes and then he's just smiling and laughing he goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah julie i don't know it's weird it's like it's like at least when, you know in previous seasons like with cody he was like legit i don't like these people like and then he got up and he walked right he got on the table and walked right out and it was like cody was like yeah i just didn't i didn't like any of these people dan is kind of like this weird like screw you guys but i'm gonna yeah and it's like wow and it makes it made me uncomfortable but um it was entertaining but it was just like one of those things where he goes i'm gonna say all this i'm gonna say this shit and then i'm gonna sit down and be like Haha, yeah right okay cool yeah and it's like, and I'm, I'm glad he got up and left and didn't try to hug anybody because I think that would have been weird too. Like, at least he did that. But it was it was definitely one of the most interesting exits I think, you know, we've seen in a while. So it's cool. <laughs> but yeah, nobody, again, is seeing Michael is just killing it. You know, when he sat with Julie, there was a couple interesting things there. Like every time she was, she would bring up like, the treatment of Taylor or the fact that nobody voted, to, like nobody wanted him there. He would kind of like do this awkward laugh, like, yeah, but no, we're good. And it's like, but you're, but you're not good, right? Because they all voted you out and you were sort of a bully to, to Taylor. So like he kept trying to play that. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but like it was sort of off camera, but the audio was there. And just as they were cutting to the commercial, he says to Julie, 
I'm for, I'm a, believe it or not, I'm a fan to her. So it's like, well, why would she not believe that you're a fan? Like, like it was so sort of disrespectful. Like he was, it was like, I know he was like nervous and stuff, and he, but it was like, that was even weird. Like that little moment with Julie. Yeah. Do you think and, um, and also- she was fishing for some sort of apology from him? Like to, to, for Taylor? Cause I feel yeah. like maybe like that was, she was going down that route, but he like quickly like, <laughs> I was like, no, we're good. We're good. Well, keep in mind, Julie is a journalist, right? So she was a journalist for years. So like her, her instinct is to go and ask the question that we're thinking. It's like, you were a bully. Like you screamed in this woman's face to never talk to you again. And like, you were just horrible to her. And so she wants to know, say that again, Pat? On national television. (laughs) <laughs> right so she wants to so she wants to like ask that question because we're fascinated and then he tried to play it like oh no we're gonna hang out it's like no you're not I don't, i'm pretty sure you're not gonna hang out yeah but she and did I, go ahead pat so i was i also loved his reaction to all the goodbye messages like he got like two like kind of nice ones and everybody else was like you're an asshole <laughs> Be on the other side. He goes, yo, that's great. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, he tried to laugh along. Michael, I mean, uh, uh, what's his face? Has two pieces of bread and tells him he's the idiot between the, the, yeah. and the idiot sandwich. It's yeah. like, dude, they're doing prop comedy. <laughs> yeah. Is that a Gordon Ramsay like, reference? Yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm in on the joke, and he's like, no, I, no, you're not. <laughs> like everybody doesn't like you. Um, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but during Taylor's portion of his goodbye messages, she was like, I guess I'm going to get, get my wish. You won't say, you won't have to talk to me until finale night. So that was fun. That was a, a fun little dig right at the end from Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. She yep. did it. She did a nice job. It was way better than her performance with a bag of chips. Oh my God. Jesus. <laughs> it's the work. What, what is that? What are we doing there? I feel like that's like one of those like there's a like a favorite contestant that has to have like a little shtick and hers is like the eating potato lays regular potato like that's the worst flavor like what dude it's a terrible flavor the shtick didn't work right it didn't work at all and I think that they were like hey listen the ratings are in the muffin gate crushed it for us <laughs> what food do we have in the back room so someone gets like we got the chips so we're like okay She's in love with chips. That's the bit. It was so bad. That I can't with the muffin gate. And that was because you know that's what happened. Like they were like the writer's room was like, hey, muffin gate's popping up. I was like, what can we do? Uh, Taylor eats chips sometimes, but look, she eats chips all the time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and at the okay. um, at the end at the end of that last episode when Julie's like telling everybody the festy best you twists is over, you see like Taylor with the reach over the couch to get the bag of chips to bring it into frame i was like they're trying so hard to make this work to make it a thing <laughs> it's not it's not gonna be a thing <laughs> um but festy bestie twist is done it's individual game and it's jury now so uh i guess the game's gonna spice up a little bit um what do you guys think overall of the festy bestie twist just like quickly like did you like it what do you think of it added strategy right yeah i mean what would you say i is there an equivalent to the festy bestie from previous seasons that they ever do something like this this was it like a battle back scenario in the past it was kind of like when they did on Derek and cody season when they did the uh, two hoa that's right nominate so there'll be four people on the block and then the battle of the block i I guess that's kind of equivalent but i'm thinking the equivalent is like last season remember they started with team like teams of four um oh yeah but this one it was like two like once pooch is eliminated then they're like all right we're gonna do teams for two to three rounds it was kind of kind of interesting they only did they did it for just a random portion uh like i listen i don't think it hurt the game yeah, it was interesting. And then the, I, I, the person eliminated had to hoping, join a team. I think they were hoping to get people who wouldn't like, like, I guess, like team up to team up and see like if that, like if you could play the game together, but they didn't. They It was like, 
it was very everybody who was on the team was on an opposite side of the house so that was cool but i think they were you know hoping that you know you would play the game with with like somebody you'd like but i think they were just like smart enough to divide and an alliance had already literally the week before the week of that twist the alliance had joined so they were like oh okay this is a perfect opportunity to hide ourselves and that was cool so they hid behind this twist essentially and that was kind of cool like to see that yeah i think the leftovers definitely um took advantage of this twist really well um but now we're in the vid let's kind of jump right into this episode tonight right um I think Uncle Shane, you said a couple episodes ago, you know, we're going to be coming up to the famous wall competition, which was this past HOH. Um, I would have thought that, I mean, there's all the dynamics of, you know, throw it to this person and whatnot, but I would have thought the front runner to win this would have been the small people, Turner yeah. and uh, Indy, which they did go decently far into it. Um, what would you guys think of the different shit that they threw at the contestants this season like the slimes and then what was it sasquatch or something sasquatch feathers it, what was it was hair and then fake news it was crazy. Yeah. so much stuff with them like, i love that we're doing a fake news bit to like several years after fake <laughs> news was like what people talked about but uh the hair was disgusting like that was like I, that was actually really a nice touch um, the two things that I noticed about it um, was, um, and I'm just trying to get her name right, um, the one with the with, who hurt her leg and always seems to hurt herself, Jasmine. Jasmine, you know, it, you know, in the episode tonight, like um, you, there's so much that's happening when they start the competition. So it felt like they could have been on the wall for 45 minutes, and then she goes down. And then they bring up the elapsed time and it's like less than five minutes. Like she was up there for less than five minutes. And then um, when Terrence fell, I felt that his fall was so fantastic. It was like when somebody dives into a swimming pool and they don't know the depth and their body just gets jacked. And then they're like in a wheelchair for the rest of their lives. It was like Terrence hit that so bad that I was like, please replay that. And he made a noise and I thought, wow, he's really, he's like, he's done. Like that's a lawsuit, but he what's, was okay. What's that dive, Pat, or when you go, you go off the diving board and then you just, you go straight oh, into a it. Corkscrew. A corkscrew. <laughs> yeah. He just like yeah, went it, completely vertical. It was the weirdest yeah, thing. It was as if somebody screamed, don't bend your legs when he was in the air. It was terrible. It looked it really like painful. His body was an accordion and all kind of smushed <laughs> down. God, I was like, <laughs> it looks like something you see on like Ridiculousness or Tosh.0. Oh, my God. But he, like if he didn't get hurt from that, I don't know what Jasmine's complaining about because that was, <laughs> that was way worse than. Uh, I love it. I, you know, listen, I feel like they've amped it up over the years. Do you remember like in the early years, it'd be like a couple like, like oh, I, I got hit with a little paint. They're covered with so much paint that it's like you almost you can't figure out who it is, right? Like you have to wait for them to like wipe their face. They, it's like a wall of paint hits them, and then when they yeah. drop the hair on, which is disgusting, it was like it was like they just shaved like a whole stable of like horses or something. It was like ridiculous. Yeah, I always wonder if like before this, like these types of competitions, they prep them like on what the, like what to wear. It's like some of the guys, like some of the guys were like wearing like nice t-shirts and shit. And like that just got destroyed by this shit. Yeah. I almost think that for some of these competitions, they're like full on giving them wardrobe, like full uh, wardrobe. Like remember in the old days, like you, you would come out and like your, your like jean, jean shorts because you just got <laughs> off the couch to play a competition. Now they're in like, if, I mean, sometimes when it's like a silly cowboy costume or Elvis costume, but like now they're in like full like workout gear that looks like a sponsorship by like Under Armour or something. But the sheer velocity I, 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 of some of the shit that, that was getting fired at them was crazy. It, it was coming in quick. Uh, I also liked uh, the, the little bit with Alyssa and, you know, I love this game and me and my family, I would try train for competitions like this i would get on the and then it cuts to her immediately falling fantastic <laughs> that was but, great 
but also did you hear what she said she's like yeah to prep to prep for this sometimes my mom would hold me up against the chain link fence and spray me with water what it was like I feel like you're you're like suppressing some shitty memory from your childhood. You're like, no, it's like Big Brother. It's like I don't. I think you were just in an abusive house. <laughs> that sounds terrible. terrible. What about her having two wine coolers and then dropping to the floor? You know, earlier in the week to twerk. That was interesting because that. And again, that's another. That was another one of those things where uh, it was they were doing that classic like who done it, who took the cider, and I was like, can we stop? doing <laughs> this boost and making this a big thing and and it's like it's kind of like muffin game it's like it's not what the, it's fucking muffins <laughs> but that was funny that like two uh hard uh angry orchards got her ready to go <laughs> like, the best thing was if you remember she starts twerking and um daniel goes what is it you're doing and someone someone had explained to daniel what twerking was this guy's in, this guy works in Vegas. This guy's a performer <laughs> in Vegas. He's never heard of twerking. DJ Terrence is just like, I see that shit all the time. <laughs> now I'm that's- a buffer in the club. <laughs> yeah. Once the music's going, like, you know. By the she way, can- he, he hasn't dropped the like DJ references. Uh, they're still coming fast, you know. Every I time. Like- I- Go ahead, Pat. I feel like that should be a drinking game. Like every, next time we watch, we'll all get like we'll all get a hard cider to stay on brand with BB, and then every time DJ Terrence does a little, anytime there's like a record scratch or he goes Showtime, that you gotta take a sip. Um. So Taylor p- pulls off the dub here. She kind of outlasts Joseph and Kyle at the very end. Um, you guys see when Kyle is like embracing her, like congratulations. Alyssa's like, "All right, stop." Yeah, <laughs> she's serious. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I, listen, was- she that was a real win. Like she really like Kyle didn't hand it to her. You know, um, a couple of episodes earlier. Um, Monty won a competition and he did the old, like, I'm giving it up to God. Like, I knew I could come through. I fi- I'm a beast. Dude, you rolled a beer. You slid a beer down a table. It's like any, like, fat bastard can do that, right? Like, you're not in any sort of physical shape. Meanwhile, it's like Taylor won a significant competition. It's a classic. And that is really hard. You know you got to be sore after that one. Yeah, the forearm's got to be buzzing um but we do get a little bit of like the strategy that taylor's trying to implement here pat what do you think about her initial plan and the reactions of some of the guys in her own alliance it it was rough it was a little rough because i decided for taylor to win and because you know she's the underdog and then again kind of like what shane said was it was like a real dominant and then she's like yelling she's like hype and i'm like on the couch i'm like yeah i'm i'm excited and it, it was a great moment and then we get into her strategy and she did she did a classic uh uh frenchie she promised everyone outside of her alliance safety and i was like oh no i didn't know you did that and yeah. you know there because it's rough because I get, you know, her, her reasoning for Jasmine, that's fine, you know, that you can't, and it sucks, because Turner said it best, he was like, this person would not do the same for you, these people would not do the same for you, and you want to screen that, but, you know, she's the HOA, she's going to make whatever decision she wants, so it was good that her alliance was there, like, Turner, and uh, they were like, I love that. I love that. Number one, she was like, "Okay, Terrence, number one. That's not even a question." Now the problem, <laughs> and DJ's like, "What? Sorry." He uh, still thought he but, still thought he was slick with her. Was oh like, yeah, Dude. he thought he was gonna get his way out of that. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 it was a little rough to see because she, she clearly not thought it out. Uh, and then when she's pitching this to her alliance, they're like, "That's probably not the best move." And then she goes, oh, okay. But, like, you know, I think Indy is a good pick 
like Indian Terrence because I, I think that's a good pick. But obviously, Indy's not going to be happy with anything ever. So you might as well throw her up. But that's, you know, my opinion. You, you know, uh, the, the funny thing is, it's like there's no television. There's no music. You, you're not allowed to bring books in. All you have to do in when you're not doing a competition, which is like those, there's not. It feels to us like there's a lot of competitions because that's what the show is. But they're in that house all the time. All you have to do is think, when I'm head of household, this is the plan. It's like she never thought that she would ever be head of household and never thought things through. But what I was impressed with was the guys, Monty and Turner, when she was giving what was clearly the worst plan of all time. It wasn't like mansplaining. You know, it was like they like they listened to her and they were like, okay, but then what happens here? They kind of like just guided her down the road and let her realize it was a bad idea without being condescending men, you know? So like, that was kind of cool. Cause it could have got it. Like they could have been like, are you an idiot? Like you're part of an of alliance here, you know? So it, it actually worked out nicely. I think Turner is, is super underrated in that aspect. Cause he, he picks up, I think, a lot on social cues and and just like people's bullshit. And you can kind of tell with like his like funny glances at the camera. And I think he did a great job in that instance. Like what happens if the one person that we don't want to win the veto wins and then doesn't use it? And then we're like up there, um, which I thought was, you know, you have the seven person alliance. There's four people on the outside. It, it should be, you know, pretty, pretty easy to go there. Um, but you know, my winner pick there, DJ Showtime seems to be in a little bit of trouble. Do you think, do you think, you know, Taylor going after DJ Showtime is the best move for Taylor? I don't either. No, I, I mean, I guess Taylor doesn't have the benefit of knowing that all of these girls were saying such horrible things about her and like, just, you know, um, Jasmine every week like I feel like even this week she's she's like talking about like why well, I, I I got we no she no she said it's like should have gotten her out when I had the chance like you never you you tried like every, you tried every week like you did everything you could it wasn't like one of those things where like you threw her a bone like you wanted her out and you could not do it so yeah. um I really want Jasmine to be out you know She's even running out of clever things. She's like, Julie, you look as good as hot apple pie. It was like, it wasn't even a clever one. Right? It, was like, it was just, it was just hot apple pie. You're just <laughs> yeah. saying like random desserts at this point. <laughs> it's, yeah. I, it's, I don't know why, you know, Terrence is the one. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think it, it'd be out of the four of them. I would clearly go Jasmine. But, you know, I get that she doesn't want to nominate another black woman. Then I would go for the showman's. I mean, that makes the most logical. And I get that uh, Tyler's in the uh, leftovers. But it's like, you know, that would clearly that that's a two vote right there. Like that's I feel would be the smartest move. Um, You know, Indy's not going to win anything. Uh, I mean, neither is Jasmine. So I guess, you know, the the big physical threat out of them is i would say uh alyssa so i'm i'm surprised that that hasn't come up but um you know and dj terrence isn't going to win anything out of the four of them the strongest one i think is probably Alyssa. i I know she hasn't won anything but you know uh what do you guys think of the uh the 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 fly swatters That's a big wow. no for me. Yeah, that was awful. That was all. It was almost as bad as as Indy taking the news that she was going to go up. Like she cannot hide it. She just she cannot hide it. I respect it, but not ideal. Did she bring one outfit into the house for the entire time? <laughs> it's I've seen her in one outfit the entire time. It's that like spandex number. It's just constant. Play the classics. Know. Really doesn't add to this conversation. It's just a thought that popped in my head. What do you guys think oh, yeah. of that approach of Indy to just like she, she's just like on a beeline up to Taylor's HOH. Like she was like 
running and then got right up into her face like i'm just checking in i also was i was literally about to say that what she she, she pulled like a tear she just went like ran up there <laughs> like, just ran up to her so what do you what do you think <laughs> uh, and she's like you remember what you said last week when, <laughs> when you pointed at me and said i wasn't going up meanwhile I, she didn't say it back to her <laughs> yeah she's like yeah. <laughs> um the only other thing that i was i was thought was interesting about this episode was kyle mm-hmm. um michael kind of is putting a little bit of sus on joseph and kyle kind of talking about how they well joseph definitely dropped from the wall competition but not having to get any of their you know any blood on their hands and being in between you know the leftovers as well as the fly swatters um, alliance uh and i think maybe there could be a crack there in that alliance maybe we see where that um ends up going further in the rounds but it seems like michael kind of has his eyes on those guys once the remaining people are uh are gone did you guys catch up catch that at all i'm yeah, interested I mean, to see what uh, ahead, I, I, i'm in I'm interested to see because uh, there's the dog pound, which is Turner, Monty, uh, Tyler, and uh, Joseph. Then they created like the leftovers, and then there's Michael, Brittany, and Taylor. So it's going to be interesting. I, I'm curious to see if they if they do get the four out, and then they make it to seven. I don't think they're gonna. I think somebody's going to shoot like fire off at somebody before the rest of them are out i could be wrong but i think that's coming up pretty soon i think i don't think michael's gonna have the patience because if the, this is going the way it's going i don't think michael's gonna have the patience i think there's gonna be an opportunity for uh his side michael Brittany, and taylor to take a shot at one of them i don't know what do you guys think I don't know. I'm so confused. I'm st- like, are Taylor and Joseph in a relationship? Mm-hmm. Like they tried to like show us that they were together, but they weren't physically near each other at any point, you know? How yeah, that-, that was a, that was such an odd segment because they were talking, they were like on the hammock and then it went to him doing laundry and then him trying to avoid Indy waking up. <laughs> that was kind of, kind of fizzled out. I was like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, I, you know, his shirt's always off. And then it went to the laundry. I was like, what are we doing? But you know, what the funny thing was the week or, or um, the episode before, that's how they got into like, she's like, oh, I really have this, I have this crush. I have this crush. And then it, it was the chips, right? <laughs> and then it was like, that bit didn't work. And then we go back. And so it was like a little foreshadowing into this relationship. So then we're going to like, are they sneaking off to the supply room? No, they're not doing that. He just has a shirt off that she's noticed it a couple times. And that's the extent of the relationship. <laughs> yeah. He's like, Joseph's hot. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, shit. Um, anything else, guys? All of our winter picks are still in at this point. Um, so anything else on BB, the BB front So this week? Um, any speculation? I, I have a question for you two. Who do you think is in uh, the best position right now? I mean, I guess the the one person that really hasn't come up in conversation as being a target or even like in anybody's mouth has been Brittany. But I just think her story arc is get to the end and lose like, you know, like get no votes. Yeah, like nobody in the nobody in the jury is going to be like really respect her gameplay, you know. Yeah. I really like Turner though. Turner, I think if he can win a couple more competitions at the end, I think he's got a chance and he's got a good story to tell. You know what? I also felt for him when um, when Taylor first said she was going to put him up, and it was like he was really hurt because he's when nobody like had her back. I mean, a couple of people like Monty had her back, but like s- quietly, nobody was vocal about it. And this dude was like the bullying, he was like the youngest guy, the bullying stops now. And then she gets head of household, she's gonna put him up. Yeah. 
oh my god that was like awful that's yeah, a great point because i was on his hoh and he made you're right he made that speech about putting an end to the bullying and that's basically when the leftovers was formed yeah that was that was the round it was like the first time she felt protected like she felt like oh i do have a family i have someone who's gonna look after me and then the moment she gets the power she's like this dude <laughs> Yeah. Hey, get rid of this day. Yeah. That, <laughs> and that's the weird because you know, you want to root for Taylor and she's like, great, but it's like you can't what are you what are you doing? Like you you got it. You can't there are there's four targets you can target that have just been nothing but nasty to you and been mean to you. And then you're gonna suggest the people that have stuck up for you and it's like, Taylor, come on, like you're losing me here. But you know, I'm glad she put Indian Terrence because I, I would have been upset if she put up Turner and Monty. Like that would have been, that would have sucked. Is there a large number of castmates that look and wink at the camera? Have you guys noticed that? There's a lot of winking at the camera, like you know, I'm with you type deal. Like you, you, you know, you get it. Like Taylor does it all the time. It's like Taylor, you're crying every episode because everybody's being mean to you. Now you're showing up at the um, nomination ceremony with a robe, like a pink robe on, like you're like royalty. It's like you're, and then like she walked up to the box, like did that model walk. It's like, all right, you know. And then you wonder why people didn't like you in the beginning. It's yeah. like it's stuff like that, you know. It's just like try to blend in. I mean, I'm not trying to say don't be who you are, but like, you know, ease into it. <laughs> Act like yeah. you've been there. Act like you've been there. Right. Come on. Like, like you're the people's champ. All you got to do is just, like, get out the people that were trying to get you out. Just do that. And it's like, God, Taylor, come on. But you want it to – I'm glad she has that alliance, though, to kind of, like, she can bounce ideas off of. But I I have a feeling that Michael is going to – somebody's going to take – He's he might have somebody take a shot for him or he's going to – He's going to take the first shot or somebody's going to take the first shot. at him. I, I think it's coming up soon. I see Brittany screwing up Michael's game. Like if Mike, because the thing is, is Michael's too good. So like if Michael goes down, it's because Brittany said something to somebody trying to advance herself and then getting wind of what Michael's doing. And like that could, that could expose him. So I actually now think Turner might be the guy to watch because he's, yeah. he's as smart as my, Michael um, and I think people like him, you know. And he's and, and he's way less of a threat because he doesn't have five competition wins. Like that last like veto, I he didn't need to like Otev Michael didn't need to win. Like that, you know. I get it. Like Terrence is trying to like uh, guess through it to him, but I you know he didn't need to do that. Right. Like didn't need to put another competition belt. Like, I, I don't know. I thought that was because it's good to win, but it's like, you're, I mean, and granted, nobody's saying anything. So as long as he's getting away with it, I guess. But he has so many competitions win, wins that I think it's coming. Like, I, I think people are starting to notice. You would hope people are starting to notice. But you know what the thing is? It's like if Terrence actually somehow gets to the final two and he's got to make a plea, he's going to bring up that he gave that competition to my, the OTEP competition to Michael. Michael was stockpiling clues. Terrence is beating nobody, right? Like, so like, ter there's no way Terrence gave that to Michael. Michael had that, you know? Oh, but like, I like, I think he, in his mind, he's like, this one I'm going to sit out. It's like, no, dude, you sit out in everything. Yeah. And especially because it got down to the end, like in that OTEP competition, Michael went down like five seconds. Got it. He had the answer. <laughs> he just went right back up. It was like, <laughs> Did so one of them, like somebody's reaction, I think, um, uh, Kyle's reaction was like, oh, wow, right? Like, it, it was like, it was, it was like, he got down, what's his face was still coming down the hill, you know? <laughs> so I, I think Turner might, might view it because I think Turner's in a better position because he doesn't have that resume, like, and it's not a threat. Like, Turner's just a smart guy and he picks up on a lot. So he might be the guy to like, be like, okay, it's time we gotta, we, we got we gotta take care of this, so. And Brittany, to your point, Shane, Brittany did that in the beginning of the season with, uh, I think, with Pooch. She went and got information. She yes. like, so that's another thing where, and she hasn't done anything since. So, 
<laughs> I mean, good on Brittany to be like, oh, I fucked up once. I'm now, I'm gonna like lay the shit. But we'll see. Um, but thank you guys again for coming on the uh, podcast. It's always a pleasure to talk some big brother. Um, as always, like and subscribe. And you know, next week. Next week we will um we will go ahead and cover you know week six and what happens with DJ Showtime Taylor's HOH and you know Indy and whatnot. Just a look at the cast. Um, but with that being said, we w- I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. So we will sign off. <laughs>